we will talk about the Chinese remainder theorem today. And um, it's a 1700 year old problem, but we start in the year of 2017 from American mathematical competition. Let's look at this problem quickly. Find the smallest positive integer greater than one. Smallest positive integer greater than one. Let's call that X, that number, such that it leaves a remainder one when divided by four, five, and six. So this number X leaves a remainder one when divided by four, five, and six. So uh, you can actually use trial and error method to find out this particular number X. Put a comment in the description and tell me what number X will work in this particular case. But we will come back to this problem. We will learn how this problem was designed. This problem was created using an idea from the Chinese remainder theorem, which was discovered by one of the greatest ancient Chinese mathematicians, San Zhu. Now he is more famous for his book, The Art of War. You can actually Google that. Um, Sun Tzu's problem was something similar to the AMC problem. So let's quickly talk about Sun Tzu's problem. Sun Tzu's problem was like this, that you start with the number X, start with the number X, and then when you divide X in threes, the remainder is two. So you can think of this in terms of pictures, in fact, if you have the number, imagine you have that many balls. If you split them in columns of three, the remainder is two. So you have sort of two balls left out. So that's the basic geometric intuition behind this simple division remainder thing. Okay. Uh, it's kind of useful because Sun Tzu used that kind of intuition. And you divide the same number X by five, the remainder is three. Divided in threes, the remainder is two. Divided in fives, the remainder is three. And divide the same number in sevens, the remainder is two. So the divisors are three, five, and seven, and the remainder is given here. And in fact, you can also guess the answer in this case. You can do it by trial and error method. It's not hard at all. So in fact, I'll give you the answer. The answer is 23. You can check. The answer is 23. 23 divided by three, remainder is two. 23 divided by five, remainder is three. 23 divided by seven, the remainder is two. What we will do in this particular video is go ahead and create a general solution using the Chinese remainder theorem. We will know about the switch method, the switch mechanism that creates the Chinese remainder theorem from uh, oblivion. So we'll see, to see, to see into that. But first we need to clear some preliminaries and we go into the arithmetic of remainders. You probably already know this. So I'll quickly go through it. There is another video at Chinta which does the same thing. Choose a divisor D and suppose this divisor is seven uh, for our example. Now choose two numbers A and B. So suppose A is 16, B is 24. Now, if you add the two numbers, you will actually add the remainders as well. That's the general principle. If the sum of the remainders is larger than the divisor, then you may have to divide again. So I'll come to that. Let's look at an example. For 16, uh, if you divide by seven, the quotient is two and the remainder is also two. Similarly, if for 24, if you divide by seven, the quotient is three, the remainder is two, uh, uh, remainder is three as well. So you divide 16 and 24 separately, separately by seven, and you find the remainder as two and the remainder as three. Now let's add up these two numbers. So if we add up 16, and then if we add to 16, the number 24, the two numbers that we started off with, the sum comes up to be 40, and the quotient is five if you divide by seven. Now you can easily see that the remainder is also five because 40 divided by seven, seven fives are 35 and the remainder is five. But the remainder can be also computed by adding up the two initial remainders, that it's two and three. So the remainder, the final remainder that you have is the sum of the two initial remainders, which is two and three. So this is the general principle that you have to keep in mind. If you add the two numbers, 
the remainders get added up. If the sum of the remainders exceeds the divisor, then you may need to add again, uh, divide again by the divisor. So there is a separate video for this kind of stuff. Uh, let's talk about the product rule. So I call it the product rule for the arithmetic of remainders. Same type of stuff. You start with the divisor D, we start with seven. Then you choose two numbers again. We choose again 16 and 24. And then if you multiply the numbers, the remainders get multiplied. So, I mean, if you divide 16 by seven, the remainder is of course two. If you divide 24 by seven, the remainder is three. Now let's multiply 16 and 24. If you multiply 16 and 24, the remainder, uh, the product comes out to be uh, 384, 384. Now you divide this product by seven and the re quotient is 54 and the remainder, it's not a surprise that it's a product of two and three, which is the two initial remainder. So two times three. So you have six, that's the final remainder. That's the general principle. You add the two numbers, remainders get added. You multiply the two numbers, the remainders get multiplied. And if something exceeds, whenever you exceed the um, divisor, you divide again. Why this works, the algebra behind it, we, will, we, we have discussed it in other videos at Chinta and in the online classroom for the number theory module for Math Olympiad program. So you can look into that. Now, one technical note, I mean, this is something fun. You can directly extract the remainder uh, by using the mod function. So for example, if you use 2019 mod 77, this will basically tell you the remainder when you divide 2019 by 77. You can try this in Google, in fact, or any programmable computer or, or calculator. So this is a fun sort of a tip, you can say. Uh, programmers use it all the time. So let's proceed to the Sun Tzu's problem one more time before we start solving it. So what was it? We want to find a number X. We, when we divide X by three, the remainder is two. When we divide X by seven, uh, five, the remainder is three. And when we divide X by seven, the remainder is two. So that was Sun Tzu's problem, initial problem. Now we know also the arithmetic of remainders, which means add two numbers, remainders get added, multiply two numbers, remainders get multiplied. Okay, now we are ready for the switch method. So let's look at the switch method, the way the number X is constructed. So this is sometimes known as a proof by construction. That means when I ask you to so show that something exists, you actually make that thing and show that it exists. So we will create the number X, which does the work. The way we do it is using three switches. So the first switch will contain a three. Now, I'll, our main objective here is to kill the three. When I say kill the three, I mean that if I divide by three, the remainder must be zero. So I can write that, divide by three to get remainder zero. So I create the first box. So I'm creating the number X using these switches. The first switch contains the number three. I put three in there. So now if I divide this number in this box, the remainder is definitely zero, which is some sounds trivial, but it will be very useful in a moment. The next thing is we add another switch, we keep it blank, and we add another switch, which has again the number three. So that's the first thing, first step of the construction. Now, killing three in the first box and killing three in the third box means that if I divide the number in the first box, and if I divide the number in the third box by three, the remainder is zero, which is something that we want, the middle box must yield remainder two because that's what we want from X. We want X to give remainder two when divided by three. That was Sun Tzu's problem. You divide the number X by three, the remainder must be two. So we must have the second box such that 
it produces a remainder 2 when divided by 3. At the moment, we don't know how to do it. Let's proceed and kill 5. So that's the next thing. We come back to the Sun Tzu's problem. We know already that if we divide a number by 3, we want the remainder to be 2. If we divide the same number by 5, the remainder must be 3. That's the next step. We start with killing 5. So how do we do it? We, what did we have earlier? We had the three boxes or the three switches. And one of first, the first, first of them contained 3 and the last of them contained 3. Now we want to kill 5. So what do we do? We kill 5 in the second box. So two of them will have 5 eliminated. That means if I divide two of them, each will produce remainder 0. So the way we do it is we just put a 5 there. It's very simple. We just put a 5 there. And it, uh, it automatically the second box gives remainder 0 when divided by 5. I kill the 5 in the third box. How do I do it? Well, I multiply the 3 that already was there by another 5. So now the remainder is 0 when divided by 5 in the third box. Now there is a problem. I changed something in the second box. Now in the second box, the remainder, we don't know. We want in the previous slide, we say that we wanted the second box to give remainder 2 when it's divided by 3. We still don't know whether we messed it up or not. Well, in this case, we did not because five already produces remainder two when divided by three. But that's kind of a luck. I mean, we just got lucky here. In general, this might not happen. When we are dividing by five, the second and the third box already killed five. So they are producing remainder zero when divided by five. We want the first box to produce a remainder three when divided by five. We want the first box to produce a remainder three when divided by five. Now the question is, how to do this we don't know yet. Well, we actually got, a, got very lucky because the first box already is producing a remainder of three when divided by five. But that's just luck, we, that might not happen in general. Sun Tzu I think got a little bit lucky as well. The general problem might not be so easy. So one last step we kill the seven because I'll remind you, we are trying to find a number x, when, which, is, which is when divided by three gives a remainder two, divided by five gives a remainder three, and divided by seven gives a remainder two. So the third step, we want to kill seven in two of the boxes. So you can pause the video right here and try to do this on your own. Try to, try to add some sevens in two of the boxes. So let's see how to do that, kill the seven. We again have x, the first box contains three, the second box contains five, and the third box contains three times five. We will kill the seven <coughs> in the first and the second box. So the do, way we do it is, in the first box, we simply multiply by seven. So then the first box produces a remainder zero when divided by seven. The second box, we do the same thing. We just multiply by seven again. So the second box also produces a remainder zero when divided by seven. What we want is when I divide the third box by seven, when I divide the third box by seven, the remainder must be zero. That's our goal. So must, I'm sorry, remainder must be two. In the third box, the number is 15 now. If I divide that by seven, the remainder is not 2 because this is 15. If I divide this by 7, the remainder is not 2, it's 1. So we have to do something more here. We are not lucky, that much lucky now. So we will come back to it, of course. We will make sure that the remainders are light. So now we are sort of halfway through the problem. The next thing we will do is use something called inversions in arithmetic of remainders. And then we will multiply the necessary remainders that we want and finish up the construction of x. So I want you to try the problem from this point. We will come back in the next video and finish it up 
and that will be our entire construction for the Chinese remainder theorem. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. And in the link in the description in chinta.com, you will find uh, beautiful courses in format Olympiad and uh, other contests. Um, stay well, and I'll see you in the next one.